This is Kate Swoboda, creator of YourCourageousLife.com, director of the Courageous Living Coach Certification at TeamCLCC.com, and author of the book, The Courage Habit, which is available at booksellers and at Amazon. The Your Courageous Life podcast is all about going after what you want and creating and living a more courageous, emotionally resilient life. Might drop a couple of F-bombs, so maybe don't listen with your kids in the backseat of the car. And here we go with today's episode. Hey, everybody. It's Kate. Today, we're going to be talking about finding your purpose. What a time to talk about that, right? (laughs) Recording this in the fall of 2020, and coronavirus is still going nuts, and there's an upcoming U.S. presidential election, and a lot of animosity about that, and here I am, and I'm going, okay, let's talk about finding your purpose. The topic for today was sparked to some degree by an organizational coaching session that I had with the profoundly, incredibly hardworking and talented coach, Laura Heacock. She's at kindovermatter.com, like instead of mind over matter, kind over matter. And she's this amazing executive coach. She works with the life coach training program for which I am the director, the Courageous Living Coach Certification And Lara, spelled L-A-R-A, in case anyone's wondering, like a Lara bar is how she says it. She had asked me, so what's your purpose for your life? And this was in the context of organizational coaching. I have sessions with her where she helps me figure out things related to hiring, fit for role, how to set KPIs for different roles in my business, how to effectively deliver feedback, because in case you were wondering, I too struggle with needing to sometimes say, so there was a mistake made here. There's something not quite right here, but like kind of not wanting to say it because I want to be liked. I'm worried I might say it in a way that the other person feels, um, feels criticized, right? So these are the sorts of things I've gone to her for help with from an organizational perspective. So she helps with, you know, all these things as they pertain to my business, which is great. So she asked me what my purpose was in the world. And I don't usually use the word purpose. I usually use the word vision and my life vision. And this is something I've been very clear on for some time. My life vision is to completely and totally love and accept myself so that I can completely and totally love and accept everyone else and thus facilitate healing in the world. And that is, to me, synonymous with purpose. And then she asked me, so what's your purpose for your business? To which I replied, to awaken people to their courage and all they're actually capable of. And then that got me thinking about how we can actually have a different purpose for different contexts in our lives and how often I've heard people say that trying to find their purpose or having some kind of purpose is a major source of stress for them. People tend to feel like if they don't exactly know what their purpose is and if they can't articulate, if they can't hop onto a podcast and just say, hey, everybody, here's my purpose slash vision for my life and here's my purpose slash vision for my business, like they're going to be lost. And I certainly see that in the self-help sphere as well where people say, if you don't know your purpose, you don't have a compass or you don't have a guiding post to help navigate troubled times. And I don't know, guys. I don't know that I agree with that necessarily because I think that we can have a a sense of purpose that arises from where we are at a particular place in our lives and just as the example I just gave, slightly different purposes depending on the context. I have a purpose that is very clear to me that's articulated for my life and then I have one that is for my business. And in some ways, the one for my business could absolutely be applied to my life as well. 
I think we can have a little more latitude around this concept of purpose. So let's dig into this today. If you know what your purpose is, maybe you'll hear some reflection questions today that'll have you go, oh, okay, that has me go a level deeper or feel more secure in the purpose I've already established for myself. If you are feeling like you're still trying to figure out what your purpose is, and this has been some level of stress for you, my hope is that it, this podcast acts as both a guide for you to arrive at some sense of purpose, if that is important to you, and also to let go of any pressure to have a sense of purpose, if that is not what's truly important to you. Maybe you'll actually get out from under a belief that you had to have some purpose in order to like have a successful life. Maybe that's not true. And wouldn't that be kind of nice if you got unhooked a little bit from that? All right, so let's get to it. So first principle that I would ask you to try on for yourself, if you are in a space of, I want to find my purpose, I think we get hung up if we decide that our purpose is a specific especially if it's an external achievement. So I hear, for instance, a lot of moms, what's your purpose? And they're, they're, you know, they you know, put a hand over their heart and they get teary eyed and they say, oh my God, my purpose is to, you know, raise my kids and just love them up. Well, here's the problem with that kind of an externally driven purpose. Uh, what happens when those kids are raised? I mean, I know the work of parenting never ends. I don't anticipate at all. You know, my kiddo is six, and I don't anticipate at all that when she's 16 or 30 or, you know, wherever life takes her, I'm always going to be her mother, and I'm always going to be a parent and in that role of, air quotes, raising her. It will look different, of course, when she is fully an adult, but I'm always in that role. I get that. What I'm saying, though, is, is what happens if your purpose is raising your kid and what is meant by that is the day-to-day of it and your whole life is about that. And what happens if your kid is like, no, I need more space? What happens if, God forbid, your kid were to die? What happens If your kid grows up and they're raised and then suddenly that's when you realize, oh my goodness, I have devoted my whole life to raising my children and I don't know what else there is to who I am and what I want this next act of my life to be all about. And these are profound questions to raise. The same can be true of other goals. Like my purpose is to um, write a novel. Well, what happens once you've written the novel? Longtime listeners will know that I am a uh, CrossFit fan. I am not a fan of Greg Glassman, who recently made some very offensive racist comments um, and has, uh, thankfully, the CrossFit community has ousted him pretty quickly, which is not to say CrossFit or any other sport doesn't have a long way to go with confronting racial injustice, um, especially in leadership. But um, I'm a longtime CrossFit fan, and that means that I nerd out on watching people who are CrossFit athletes compete at the CrossFit Games. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen them being interviewed, and they say things like, my purpose is to win the CrossFit Games. And I would imagine this is very similar, like my purpose is, you know, football players are going, you know, my purpose is to, to win the Super Bowl. Well, what happens when you do that? What happens to the startup founder who says, my purpose is to make this a Fortune 500 company? The external goals, even if they are in so many ways beneficial to others, as in the case of a parent who wants to raise their children, or even if they are some of the most amazing goals that a human could accomplish, something that only a fraction of a percentage of humans ever get to experience, if they're external and if they're about achievement, I would caution you against making that your purpose. 
So just a thought, if someone were to ask you right now, what is your purpose? What would you say? Is the first thing that comes to you something that is either an external achievement or something that once fulfilled, you would be right back at square one with, okay, what, 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 am, what is my life actually about here? Now, again, I don't particularly buy into the story that you have to have a clearly defined purpose. So this, if you're noticing stress, this is not a cause for stress. If you're kind of going, well, gosh, now that I'm thinking about it, my, I have been thinking of my purpose as being very externally driven or achievement oriented. And oh no, that's all wrong. And no, 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 not saying you got to stress out about it. And if you also are drawing a blank and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm a wreck. When am I going to get my life together? Or whatever your inner critic might say about finding a purpose. I got to find a purpose. This is why my life is such a mess. Mm. A lot of gentleness with yourself, please. Gentleness is so often the most courageous thing we can do for ourselves and for our lives. Your purpose might never be articulated in a really clear way, and it doesn't need to be. And I don't think you have to have some clear picture or articulation of a purpose in your head in order to live a good life. Plenty of people live great lives. And if you ask them what their purpose is, they're going to go, hmm, not sure. Haven't thought about it. I guess it might be this. But I do think it's worth, if you want to have a purpose and if you feel like it could be helpful for you, because I can see how it is. Is your purpose, as you would currently articulate it, externally motivated or about an achievement? Bookmark that for just a moment for yourself, because I'm going to ask another question now, or I guess I'm, I'm going to get into another concept that typically trips people up around the, the idea of purpose, which is that you are going to land on some kind of purpose and shazam, you know it and it feels right. And you're like, yes, that's it. That concept, I also think, (laughs) ties people into knots. Because when you're thinking about something as large as a sense of life purpose, and it is large and it is profound, it, it doesn't seem like it would be so shocking to me that that would be a little bit scary. Or that maybe it would feel so big that a part of you would be going, I don't know, am I, am I stretching too much? Like that feels right, but it's kind of, whoa, this is really normal. You're a human and stepping into purpose and making such a conscious, present, informed decision to say, this is my purpose and this is what I'm going to do with my life. These are big things. So if you are landing on at least an initial articulation of purpose and you're thinking to yourself, wait, I don't know. Maybe that's not my purpose because I don't feel like the, you know, golden light is raining down on me and the gates to heaven have parted and everything in my life is clicking into place. No, I don't think it works that way. How I think it works is that we take time to arrive at a sense of purpose, that it is a conscious and deliberate decision to start looking at your life and asking yourself, what is my purpose and how am I going to create that and co-create it with the world? And that you're going to take a couple stabs at it before you're going to really land on something that is about 75% of the way there and maybe 25% feels way too big. Who the hell am I to articulate such a thing? And a little bit intimidating. I myself, for sure, went through a couple rounds before I actually landed on this idea that my purpose is to completely and totally love and accept myself so that I can completely and totally love and accept everybody else and thus facilitate healing in the world. Next concept we can talk about here. So first concept Let's move away from achievements and externally driven purpose statements. Uh, Second concept, it might not just click into place super, super easy. 
You might have a couple of drafts that you need. And third concept, what if your purpose is what you say it is? Like what if there's not a right purpose out there floating in the world waiting to be discovered? What if you could choose a purpose right now and this is your purpose from which you operate at this time and if it needs to change later, it changes later. What if it's fluid? What if there's a purpose for one season of your life as you're going through a particular transition that's different from what your purpose will become later? What if there's a purpose to the age bracket that you're in? And I don't mean that in a like census taking kind of way. I mean it in like, what if there is a certain purpose that is in your extreme youth that is different than in your early adulthood that is different than in later adulthood that is different than when you are in the sunset season of life? What if there are different purposes for different jobs? What if it's all pretty fluid? Okay. What if that's how it works? And if that is how it works, then here's the good news. You don't have to wait to find your purpose. You can let go of this concept of finding your purpose and start going into creating your purpose, declaring your purpose. And if that idea appeals to you and you're going, well, yeah, that sounds really nice, but like, where would I start? He, my suggestion would be to start from a place of values. So you could start with a purpose that translates across life that's not externally driven, that's something like, my purpose is to live from my values. So if you've done any values clarification work, then you know what your values are. My purpose is to live from my values. How do I start living from my values? You set a reminder in your phone or you put a post-it note on the coffee pot that every morning you're going to sit down and you're going to briefly check in. I've got these top three values. Have I been living my purpose from those values in the past 24 hours? Can I think of instances where I lived from a place of integrity or lived from a place of courage in the last 24 hours? And then you can set an intention for yourself. Here's how I'm going to live from my values, aka live from my purpose, if that's what you're declaring, today. Will you do it imperfectly? Yes, of course. Everybody will. Everybody does. I do too. I do not every single day, by any stretch of the imagination, completely and totally love and accept myself. I certainly don't, by any stretch of the imagination, have any perfection I've achieved around completely and totally loving and accepting everyone else. My purpose is there to love and accept myself and everyone else and thus facilitate healing in the world as a guidestone, a touch point. When I am trying to make a tough decision, is this aligned with my vision, my purpose? When I am feeling like I'm lost, how do I reconnect with that sense of vision, that sense of purpose? So you could choose something like living from my values. You could also choose something like uh, picking one value. My purpose is to choose courage as often as possible. And if you really want to get going with this concept and the suggestions that I'm putting out there so far just aren't landing for you as particularly interesting, I got to tell you, I've had a number of people who have told me that they know of a friend who had this great life purpose and they really envied that friend and wished that they had such a great life purpose and you know they could recite maybe in a workshop they were doing with me or one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. They could recite what their friend's purpose was and the, the fretting and the worry about they've got their purpose articulated and where's mine. My invitation is, well, who says that there's a monopoly on a life purpose or a life vision? If you have a friend who has declared a life purpose and when you hear them say it, it lights you up, guess what? That might be your purpose too. My purpose or vision, I, I just for some reason have always been drawn to the idea of calling it a life vision rather than a life purpose. 
But that vision, which I articulate as my life vision is to completely and totally love and accept myself so that I can completely and totally love and accept everyone else and thus facilitate healing in the world. If you hear that and you're like, that is on the money for me, I want some of that, share, share with me. There is nothing to stop you from adopting that as your purpose as well. I'm not copywriting it. I'm freely saying I invite you to live your life from that place. Wow, what a powerful world it would be if everyone started to live their lives from that kind of a place. There's no monopoly on a life purpose. If you feel that your life purpose is to serve your religion, great. Other people have that life purpose too. If you feel that your life purpose is is to is articulated as something like maximize my potential. Great. Other people have that life purpose too. There's no monopoly on this. So you can step into, hey, I, I, I could have different purposes for different seasons. This is something that's evolving. How about I pick something that I can try on as a guidepost? Now, I realize that the idea of just picking something and trying it on doesn't feel as profound as all the stories you've probably heard of, you know, from motivational speakers who are going, and then the day came, and I was down in the mud, and I looked up and the sun was shining, and suddenly I knew my purpose. I get it. Those stories inspire me to love them. You know how I figured out my life purpose, life vision? big piece of paper and some of those Mr. Sketch smelly markers, the ones that smell like different fruits and stuff on a, on a carpeted floor, trying not to get marker on the floor. And my, my purpose, my vision feels incredibly profound in many ways. There are definitely times when I feel more or less connected to it. It shifts, but It might not be the heavens parting. It might be that for you to just get started with this idea, you're going to need to pick something, try it out, experience it, modify it. And having some kind of a daily, at the very least weekly check-in with your purpose so that you can feel how connected you are to it and see if it needs some evolution that is, to me, the most active way to take on this particular concept of finding your purpose. So with all of this having been said, how will you make this concept actionable for yourself? And by actionable, I mean, let's not have this be just another podcast that you listen to today and you're like, oh, okay, I'll kind of just file that away. Finding my purpose sounds nice. I'll kind of think about that. This whole, I'll kind of think about that thing is a thing I notice people frequently tell themselves like, you know what? I'm going to have to think about that. What that actually means most of the time is I'm not yet willing to choose to do something about this right now. And my invitation for you is to not do that, to not just, oh, okay, I'm going to think about that, to instead actually say, I'm going to choose something right here and right now that can act as my purpose. I'm for the next seven days going to consciously check in on it every morning or every lunch hour or at night before bed, whatever works for you once a day, seven days and try on finding your purpose and then seeing how it might need to evolve. When you have a sense of purpose, even if it is just a sort of placeholder purpose because you know that you haven't quite arrived at what feels like the purpose for you if that's really what you're after or if you feel like you're you're still just trying on this concept when you even just start trying on this concept you start to see places where your life is and is not aligned with what you want it starts helping you to be a little more accountable and in being more accountable to be more purpose-driven. That's the cool thing about a do-it-now attitude with this concept, that you don't have to wait to get the results that having a clearly defined purpose might bring. Your clearly defined purpose for you that feels really unique and resonant to you might take some time to evolve, but you can actually go now and begin the process of utilizing this concept. It doesn't have to be stressful. 
It doesn't have to be this big thing. It can be something that you actively apply here and now. So how will you do that? How will you take this step right here in this moment towards your courageous life? All right, that's today's podcast. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. You know you can continue the work and the fun if you want to. Head on over to yourcourageouslife.com forward slash begin and become a Your Courageous Life subscriber because as soon as you sign up, you get access to an entire library of worksheets and audios and other bonuses. And of course, you'll be receiving more courage in your inbox and who wouldn't love that? You can learn more about the Courageous Living Coach Certification at teamclcc.com. You can get the Courage Habit at your local bookseller, on Amazon, wherever you like. We can even connect on social media. I'm on Facebook at Your Courageous Life. So look for facebook.com forward slash Your Courageous Life. And I'm on Instagram as Kate Courageous. And I'd love to connect with you on Instagram. So here's to you using these courageous tools in your life and creating a real ripple effect of good. And again, thanks so much for listening. I love it that you're here.